Yes. So I think it's nine sharp. I don't know, Erica, if my clock is. Uh, nope, it's time. That's yep. time. So uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to this um, UMBA Marine Fires webinar series. Uh, my name uh, is Enrico Ronchi, and uh, together with Erika Kuligowski, also here, uh, we are uh, co leading the uh, UMBA Marine Fires group, permanent group of the International Association for Fire Safety Science. Uh, this is our webinar series, which is now at its seventh, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, episode. And uh, today I'm very pleased to uh, introduce Hanna uh, Naimanova from the Czech Technical University of Prague. They will talk about the topic, the key topic of her research activities, that is evacuation of preschool children. So she will give uh, an overview uh, about uh, her uh, PhD work uh, in this domain um, and uh, all the interesting uh, information that she collected about uh, uh, preschool children evacuation. Uh, before we start, I have a couple of uh, uh, information. Uh, first of all, as mentioned, uh, this webinar series is part of uh, a set of activities that we are doing within the permanent group of uh, called UMBM in Fires of IFSS. And this includes this webinar series, but also as a, one of the key activities that we are carrying out, led by Erica, is the uh, development of a research agenda uh, concerning uh, UMB in fires. And this is applied both to uh, building fires as well as uh, uh, wildfires, so outdoor fires. Uh, this In this webinar series, I have to uh, acknowledge the help from one of my PhD students, Arthur Royer, which is here behind the scenes, making sure that everything works. Uh, and one important aspect that he's taking care of is that uh, those events are recorded because uh, we then post them on our uh, YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel of our webinar series in which we uh, actually um, uh, post all the recordings. So if anyone wants to uh, watch this uh, offline, send it to friends or send it to colleagues and so on, uh, all the webinars uh, are um, recorded and then shared publicly. Uh, so uh, Arthur, I've seen that uh, has posted also the link to the uh, YouTube channel. So you can also just sign up to the YouTube channel if you want to be uh, kept updated. Um, one more thing, uh, within the activities of the uh, UMBM Fires group, we will have a, a workshop space within uh, uh, the next uh, uh, IFSS conference, International Association of Fire Safety Science Conference, which is happening in October in Japan. So we're really excited to visit Japan and to have these activities. So we have started the planning of this workshop and uh, you will hear uh, from us with uh, more information. So um, related to this, if you want to be kept updated on our activities, next webinars and so on, uh, you can join to our group, the permanent group. This is free, you don't have to pay anything. And Arthur will post uh, later on um, a, a form to sign up. So uh, as I said, you can decide the type of engagement that you want. You can just sign up just to remain updated on activities that we do. Or if you want to be more actively uh, engaged, you can also do that and, uh, and indicate it uh, to us. Uh, the idea though, uh, the main idea of this group is to try to coordinate efforts in this domain. So if you are a researcher or if you are a practitioner that is interested in the domain of UMBM in fires, feel free to reach out and join the group. As I said, it's free. You don't, you don't commit to anything. So it's uh, just the next opportunity to receive relevant information on the topic. Uh, for about today, um, after the short introduction that I do, uh, we will have the presentation from Hannah and this is planned to last about 40, 45 minutes. And we will also have the opportunity afterwards to ask Hannah questions or comments. So what I ask you to do, you can uh, write comments uh, in the chat also during the presentation if you want, and we will take them 
uh, all these comments and questions at the end, or uh, at the end, I will also uh, moderate other questions. So uh, once we will finish the presentation, you can basically uh, raise your hand or type in the chat and I will uh, call, uh, call you in. This, of course, depends on how many questions we get, but I will try to moderate in the hope that we manage to cover all questions uh, that were received. So uh, now it's time to introduce Hannah. And uh, I just have a short video for Hannah. Hannah is an assistant professor in the Department of Architecture Engineering at the Czech Technical University in Prague, CTU in Czech Republic. And she specializes uh, in evacuation dynamics and behavior of preschool children. And her areas of interest include human behavior in fire, design and analysis of evacuation experiments, and evacuation modeling. So we are really excited uh, to have you here, uh, Hannah, today talking about uh, your research on uh, preschool children evacuation. So uh, I think it's time uh, to leave the floor to you so you can share your presentation and we look forward uh, to hear uh, about your research. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, many thanks, Enrico, for uh, the introduction and uh, also for the invitation to have a talk in this very interesting webinar series. And uh, now um, I will try to share my uh, screen with you so can, you can see my uh, presentation. Uh, mm, can you see uh, the presentation? All good, all good. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Anna. Um, so uh, let's start. Um, evacuation dynamics. Um, and behaviors of uh, children uh, appears to be uh, very actual and uh, uh, hot topic uh, for the whole field of uh, evacuation and pedestrian dynamics. And uh, young children are people who are to a large uh, extent uh, dependent <clears throat> on assistance provided by others and uh, whose decision-making and uh, self-rescue capabilities in emergencies may be limited. Uh, we uh, sometimes also talk about uh, at-risk populations uh, in this context. And uh, for starters, uh, I would like to point out that uh, childhood uh, covers a large uh, development span uh, in human life. Uh, very simply, we can say that childhood starts uh, with the birth and it ends sometimes when we grow up uh, into uh, adulthood. Uh, however, uh, we can find uh, different opinions when childhood really ends. And many psychologists consider the age uh, when uh, the adolescence uh, arises to be the end. Uh, but some consider adolescence to be only an extension of childhood. So uh, we can see uh, childhood to be divided into three basic stages, or maybe more often uh, into four stages by scholars uh, in order to describe the main developmental differences. And uh, this is very important also for understanding children evacuation uh, behaviors and uh, it's important that we cannot generalize the label children and uh, we should be quite precise uh, at uh, uh, what age of children uh, we actually consider. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I will focus on children uh, in the early childhood stage. Uh, from three to basically six years of age, sometimes also called as preschool children or preschool uh, children age. And um, the presentation will be also uh, particularly about uh, preschool children evacuation under very low adult to child um, ratios um, that occur usually in early childhood educational institutions uh, such as nursery schools or daycare centers, kindergartens. Uh, there is various terminology used for uh, such educational programs across different countries. 
And when we look uh, at a diagram describing the enrollment rates of uh, preschool children in early educational institutions in different European countries, uh, their enrollment may be very close to uh, 100 percent in some cases. And uh, in these facilities, uh, preschool children are uh, the majority and spend a significant amount of time there, uh, which leads also to very specific and challenging evacuation conditions. Um, I uh, would like to talk uh, about the main specifics of this population uh, to be considered in uh, human uh, behavior in fire studies and in fire safety uh, and evacuation design as well. Uh, first, uh, I will present some key developmental aspects uh, that are important for understanding uh, of children's evacuation abilities and specifics. And uh, then uh, we will talk about our current knowledge and existing research done uh, in this field. Uh, I would like particularly introduce an experimental study done at uh, CTU as a part of my PhD research. Uh, and finally, uh, at the end, uh, we can discuss some um, challenges that uh, preschool children evacuation uh, may pose for experimental research and uh, evacuation and egress modeling, and maybe also for uh, other applications in uh, fire engineering. Uh, so let's start uh, with some key aspects uh, related to child development. Uh, which can help us to look uh, into the differences uh, in adults' and children's uh, behaviors, thinking and uh, movement ability, uh, abilities. And uh, researchers commonly distinguish uh, the four major domains, the cognitive and the effective motor and physical domain. Uh, in the real world, uh, these domains are not discrete, but they uh, continuously influence each other and create the most complex system. Uh, in general, children grow and progress at a very rapid pace across all domains during the early childhood period. Um, each child, for sure, uh, develops individually on its own pace. Uh, however, uh, some general patterns and common characteristics can be determined. Uh, children typically start to walk without support around one year of age, and then they become more experienced gradually as they grow. Um, however, researchers are divided when children uh, achieve a gait pattern, uh, uh, which uh, looks like uh, adults' uh, walking gait pattern, because um, stride dynamics may not be matured before four to seven years of age. And uh, just curious, uh, developmental potential to acquire major run occurs around six years of age. Um, when we look uh, on movement on stairs, uh, children go upstairs without the help of adults around two years of age, even later downstairs. Uh, however, they usually follow a marking time pattern. That means they don't alter feet on steps and uh, also use handrails for support. And the change from marking time pattern to feet alternation can be observed between three or four years of age. Uh, but for children, the use of handrails or other supports uh, may be needed even longer. Um, as children age, they acquire the ability to think, speak, uh, reason, and learn, and they gain new skills and um, experience. Uh, however, in the preschool age period, uh, children's cognitive development, their thinking, uh, differs most from that of older children and adults. And uh, we can assume that uh, preschool children do not yet uh, understand concrete logic and uh, they are not fully capable to mentally manipulate information because also their own perspective to see the world uh, that's also called uh, egocentrism uh, causes their partial incapability to recognize uh, that other people 
do not share the same point of view. And this all may result in their um, limited self-rescue capabilities and also abilities to properly evaluate uh, emergency situations. Uh, children also continuously learn how to be a part of society and how to interact uh, with others around them. Uh, after parents, teachers take usually the role of attachment figures and uh, they represent for children providers of uh, emotional security and authority, uh, which is important for evacuation uh, and emergency situations. Uh, and finally, uh, there are differences in uh, physical dimensions between children and adults that are usually discussed uh, when children evacuation dynamics is, uh, is further considered. And um, physical growth of children in the same age group can vary significantly uh, due to individual rates of physical maturation, but uh, we can uh, find uh, general patterns which are common uh, in human and that can be represented uh, by growth charts. Uh, the World Health Organization provides uh, some child growth standards uh, that are commonly uh, adopted and recommended for international use. Uh, we can read uh, in these charts that the mean value for body height is around 95 centimeters for three year old child and around 110 centimeters for a six year old child. And, um, but here is um, very important to say that uh, besides the large uh, interpersonal variants, uh, there are also other uh, factors that affect uh, growth, development of children, uh, such as uh, anthropological and cultural backgrounds. Uh, for example, uh, I put also uh, some uh, grow, uh, grow charts uh, uh, which are representing for uh, Czech children uh, population and uh, that are based on anthropological surveys. And uh, these curves uh, fully correspond uh, with the uh, statistical data on a human average high across the world, uh, which ranked Czech populations among the tallest populations worldwide. So uh, you can see that uh, there are uh, differences uh, in uh, children and uh, populations uh, growth and the development around the world. Um, maybe these pictures can help us um, to understand uh, the growth differences uh, between preschool children and adults. Uh, for comparison, uh, the step rise of 22 centimeters represent, uh, represents 25% uh, of the leg length uh, for adults, but uh, this is almost 45% of leg length for three year old child. And this is quite a huge difference. And it's interesting that researchers uh, have found that uh, children at this age are capable to plan their steps down uh, with the same sensitivity as adults, uh, but only uh, in the case that the ratio between step riser and their leg length is the same. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, then the usual performance when children struggle to step down uh, should be not attributed to their limited visual motor skills, uh, but rather to the demanding uh, stress geometry uh, they have to face with. Um, similarly to uh, body high, um, also other uh, body dimensions uh, should be adequately considered when preschool children are assessed in pedestrian movement calculations uh, and, and flow calculations, uh, especially when we can deal with uh, different units of density the commonly used expression of density uh, uh, employs number of people per uh, 
meter square. And this can be quite misleading uh, when uh, we evaluate the density conditions um, for people with different body dimensions, uh, such uh, children. And for this case, the concept of uh, occupied uh, area introduced by Pretichinsky uh, Milinsky uh, seems to be a bit more appropriate because uh, it allows us to consider different body dimensions of people and uh, density is expressed here uh, in units uh, meter square per meter square. And uh, for this approach, uh, information on area uh, occupied uh, by people is essential. Uh, researchers uh, usually use horizontal projection of human body uh, described uh, as an ellipse um, uh, defined by shoulder width and chest breadth. Uh, just depth, sorry. And um, in this picture, uh, we can see horizontal projections uh, for adults in some dress and a range of values uh, as presented by Pretetinsky Milinsky for the category uh, for the category children, unfortunately, without the specification of age. Uh, for more specific examples, uh, we can look um, uh, we can look uh, at this table uh, where I put uh, some more detailed uh, information uh, which is um, available for uh, Czech uh, children populations because uh, we have um, detailed body measurements uh, available thanks to extensive anthropological surveys conducted uh, every 10 years uh, uh, since the 50s uh, in the Czech Republic. And um, in the table, you can see uh, data for shoulder width and chest uh, circumference uh, were used uh, for estimating the variable of chest depth and uh, consequently also uh, for occupied area for children in different uh, uh, age uh, groups and age ranges. And we can see that uh, the values of uh, horizontal projection are around a quarter square meter. And um, here again, um, we must keep in mind that the impact of uh, anthropological and cultural background is uh, very important uh, when we would like to generalize uh, such findings. Um, now, um, I, I will slowly move to uh, the existing research on preschool children evacuation, uh, which has been uh, done and uh, which has been increasing, uh, especially in the last uh, decade. And um, empirical data on movement characteristics and evacuation behaviors were uh, usually collected in a field uh, evacuation experiments, uh, mostly in fire drills, exceptionally also um, in non-emergency observations and controlled field experiments, maybe. And to date, um, research studies in this field uh, have presented several consistent findings uh, that highlight the importance of two factors. Uh, attitudes and approaches taken uh, by responsible adults and uh, the age of children. Uh, I will point out only uh, some examples of the existing findings related to these factors. Uh, first, um, reaction decisions, actions, and uh, preparedness of responsible adults, uh, usually staff members uh, in the institutions, uh, influence to a large extent uh, evacuation procedures and uh, efficiency. Uh, during evacuation, um, as well as movement behaviors of children. And second, uh, the assistance uh, required by children during evacuation uh, is uh, age dependent, uh, just like their movement behaviors and movement abilities. Uh, differences in um, movement uh, patterns and abilities and uh, differences in actual developmental levels uh, can be more obvious on staircases 
uh, that can be generally assumed um, as the most challenging part uh, of evacuation routes for preschool children. Um, regarding um, the issue of preschool children evacuation, uh, we can found um, many interesting works uh, and publications in the field of evacuation dynamics and safety science. Uh, I put some of them um, um, on this list uh, to be maybe a nice uh, sources for some of you for further information and details. Uh, but in the following slides, uh, I would like to present an experimental study uh, conducted as a part of my PhD research at uh, CTU uh, that included uh, 15 evacuation drills in 10 uh, nursery schools with around 1,000 participants. Uh, the table you can see uh, summarizes um, the number of participating children who were observed according to their age groups and labeled here uh, as junior, senior, uh, senior plus and uh, mixed uh, children groups. Uh, the drills were performed in line with uh, standard fire regulations and procedures in the nursery schools uh, without any intervention, uh, just uh, video recorded for subsequent analysis. Special care was uh, given to ethical considerations and the level of announcement of uh, the drills followed the wishes of the director of each uh, nursery school. So um, different types of evacuation drills uh, could uh, occur. Uh, they could be um, announced, partially announced or unannounced uh, to the participants uh, in advance. Uh, observations were uh, made uh, in, in whole buildings, um, uh, that's in classrooms uh, on uh, all parts of evacuation routes and also in exits. And uh, for further analysis, uh, we determine so-called measurement areas um, in experimental plans in advance. And uh, in total, 100 measurement areas were set up in uh, corridors on uh, staircases, uh, separately on flights and landings, uh, and also in doorways. Uh, in this study, uh, we focused on three main areas of evacuation processes. Uh, which were observed and analyzed, uh, evacuation behaviors, uh, and then uh, also movement characteristics uh, on different parts of escape routes, and then uh, specific of evacuation procedures observed during uh, the drills. And um, evacuation behaviors um, of both children and staff members were uh, tracked uh, both in uh, the pre-movement phase and the movement phase uh, of the evacuation processes. Um, and a number of variables um, uh, were uh, observed, including uh, uh, different levels of uh, assistance uh, provided to children. Um, reactions of children to different uh, alarms, uh, strategies taken um, when uh, children uh, were leaving classrooms, group formations, and uh, also uh, various uh, movement patterns on staircases. And uh, when we talk about movement characteristics, um, there, um, they were observed on all parts of escape routes uh, in the measurement areas I mentioned before. And here, uh, travel speed specific flows and their relationships to densities uh, were studied for all age groups of uh, children. Uh, from a large amount of data uh, and observations we actually collected, uh, I have selected uh, only several key findings uh, on evacuation behaviors and uh, movement characteristics, uh, I find uh, interesting to be um, to be shared here with you. Um, during the evacuation drills, uh, children required 
both verbal and physical help that uh, was provided uh, by responsible staff to them. And for quantification of uh, this aspect, uh, we determine um, uh, the following five categories. Uh, you can also see as yes, uh, uh, pictograms uh, in, this, uh, in this picture. Uh, first, uh, no physical assistance. Uh, this is the first picture and uh, first column uh, in the table. Uh, occurred most uh, frequently in both pre-movement and movement phase uh, during the evacuation drills. Uh, then uh, we have here the category gentle pushing uh, that uh, included physical contacts between children and adults, uh, but physical contacts uh, that were not necessary to proceed the evacuation, such as gentle pushing on children's heads or backs, and special categories were established for uh, the situations when physical contact was necessary to proceed uh, evacuation processes. Um, and this is, the, um, this is the picture in the middle here, the third column. And uh, there were also situations uh, when uh, adults hold children's hand and also uh, when uh, adults carried children. Um, some, of, some kind of uh, physical help was provided to 25% uh, of the participating children during the pre-movement phase and to 10% uh, of children traveling through the building. Uh, then we identified the principles of the affiliation model and role rule model uh, during uh, the observed evacuation drills. Uh, children tended to follow memorized daily activities and to use familiar exits and escape routes. And uh, on the other hand, staff members acted uh, according to their social roles of teachers and responsible adults. And they usually provided uh, emotionally uh, security uh, to the children. Uh, it is also good to mention that uh, evacuation behaviors um, uh, of all participants, including uh, handholding and leaving strategies, uh, group formation and using of uh, handrails and so on uh, uh, was strongly influenced by the instructions uh, given by uh, staff members and also uh, by daily routines, rules and educational practices employed in uh, particular nursery schools. And this finding even more emphasize uh, the importance of uh, uh, including and respecting uh, the cultural background uh, that can have a significant impact on evacuation procedures and also uh, on behaviors of children uh, during evacuation. Um, considering movement characteristics uh, of children, uh, which were observed in the study, uh, I will briefly mention only uh, three key findings. Uh, first, uh, as partially expected, uh, children's travel speeds were dependent on the age of uh, children and also on actual density conditions. Uh, then higher travel speeds were observed on horizontal parts of evacuation routes. Uh, in corridors, um, landings, and in doorways, uh, then on vertical parts, um, uh, such as stairs. And when we compare different horizontal parts, then higher travel speeds uh, were observed in corridors than on landings and in doorways. And this is uh, also important uh, to mention here that uh, except for doorways, only low density conditions occurred during uh, the observed uh, evacuation drills. Uh, 
Uh, in this graph, um, um, I will show you uh, the relationships between uh, travel speeds and densities. And uh, here you can see uh, the results observed for children under four years of age, uh, also called junior children uh, in this study, uh, that were observed during the evacuation drills in corridors. <clears throat> and left, uh, we have the results for walking children and right for running uh, junior children. And uh, when we uh, can compare these results, uh, with the values uh, measured for children over four years. Uh, it means senior and senior plus children. Uh, then uh, we can see that uh, all the children uh, reach higher uh, speeds, both walking and running uh, in the same measurement areas. Uh, especially high uh, travel speeds can be seen um, in senior plus children when uh, they were running in corridors. And these results show um, a clear example uh, of how uh, the movement characteristics of children can differ even in the preschool age period. Uh, and uh, this uh, suggests that uh, this aspect should be also carefully considered in uh, evacuation design. Um, this graph uh, shows us the other finding I mentioned before. Um, this is a comparison of the results obtained for um, all children, uh, regardless of age, on different parts of uh, the evacuation routes observed. And we can separate a look uh, at uh, the travel speeds measured in uh, corridors, uh, on landings and in doorways. And when we compare these data sets uh, for horizontal routes uh, with the results uh, measured on uh, flights, uh, then we can see that the lowest values were obtained on uh, vertical evacuation routes. And therefore, we can highlight the need for uh, relevant use um, of experimental data measured under various boundary conditions, such as types of uh, evacuation routes and uh, surfaces. Uh, finally, uh, I also included uh, some of the findings from this study uh, I talked about uh, which before, uh, but here uh, in the form of uh, behavioral statements. Uh, the idea of behavioral statements uh, follows the original concept, uh, which was already introduced in the literature and uh, which appears uh, as a very useful tool how to represent and use um, our scientific knowledge on human behavior in fire in uh, evacuation modeling and uh, other applications as well. And behavioral statements can help us um, to understand the specifics of preschool children evacuation and movement, uh, when uh, it, it should be quantified, uh, for example, uh, in um, determining of pre movement times or movement characteristics, uh, usage of evacuation routes and uh, behavioral itineraries. Uh, however, uh, we know that. Uh, understanding and quantification of evacuation behavior of people is a um, very, uh, very challenging task. And um, this uh, move us um, uh, slowly to the final part uh, of this webinar uh, that deals with uh, further challenges that uh, the specifics of preschool children evacuation uh, can pose, uh, for example, in egress and uh, uh, evacuation modeling. And the question uh, may be uh, if we um, even can uh, effectively simulate uh, children behavior in existing evacuation models. And this, um, of course, uh, largely depends uh, 
on the characteristics of each model. Uh, there is quite large variety uh, in the models uh, that offer various uh, modeling approaches and tools. Uh, so um, it will be maybe better to transform uh, the question into uh, what capabilities should a model have to allow us uh, simulate preschool children evacuation. And first, uh, we can mention that the model user uh, should be able to include input data uh, that, uh, uh, that can reflect various uh, physical dimensions of uh, agents or groups of uh, agents in, in the crowd. Uh, some of the parameters that can be uh, manipulate uh, by the user may be usually mm, shoulder width and, and high of, uh, of, 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 the, of the agents. Uh, but there are also other individual parameters uh, available in some models uh, that can help to better simulate child and dynamics, um, such as um, comfort distances or boundary layers of agents. And our observations uh, show that um, close physical contact uh, with each other, such as uh, touching and pushing, was typical for preschool children when uh, they were moving uh, in a compact flow. And uh, moreover, um, under higher densities, uh, children uh, formed uh, very often um, quite compact crowds uh, with minimum body buffer zones. Um, then um, also movement characteristics uh, such as um, traveling speeds and, and flows uh, should be assessed individually for children agents and uh, ideally with respect uh, to different types uh, of escape routes uh, such as horizontal and vertical escape routes, as, as we talked about uh, it a bit earlier. Um, very interesting is the matter of uh, speed density uh, relations and uh, reductions of uh, maximum speed of uh, agents uh, simulated in, in the model, uh, which um, is usually based on the SFP curves and uh, maybe on observation of adult populations, but uh, such relations are also very specific uh, for, for children. Uh, in some models, um, advanced simulation uh, of uh, evacuation behavior can be addressed through uh, behavioral itineraries uh, special tasks uh, assigned to agents in the model uh, that can be very useful to capture in more detail some sequences typical for uh, preschool children evacuation. Uh, for example, um, stop and go movements or uh, waiting phases uh, when uh, children have to wait at specific points. Uh, that can be simulated uh, uh, in the models and also uh, some uh, weightings uh, for instructions or uh, stops uh, made uh, because of uh, waiting for unlocking doors and so on. Um, they are uh, quite a, a, a wide range of uh, specifics. Uh, when uh, preschool children uh, are involved. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we can identify uh, some uh, behavioral and movement patterns that are also very important for description of children evacuation dynamics, uh, but appropriate tools remain quite limited in current models. Uh, examples for such limitations maybe movement in specific formations, pairs and compact groups. Uh, then also restrictions 
uh, of overtaking of individuals and uh, restriction of merging of different groups on evacuation routes. And finally, also the leader follower phenomena uh, that is partially getting uh, increasing uh, scientific attention in last years. However, um, its integration in the most uh, models available uh, is actually still missing or is uh, quite limited. Uh, what can we further assume uh, as a key issue uh, when we talk about response level modeling of children evacuation uh, is also the scarcity of relevant data uh, that can be used as inputs uh, into the models. And uh, uh, in other words, uh, we would need more experimental data sets, which would be relevant uh, for uh, modeling and also calibration and validation purposes and we should include the full research background and uh, a comprehensive interpretation of potential limitations for further uh, applications uh, of the data. Um, in this context, uh, it is also worth uh, to mention some challenges uh, that can be related to experimental evacuation research that involves preschool children participants. Uh, first of all, among other populations, uh, children represent a very sensitive and vulnerable part of our society. Hence, um, uh, we should give extra care to ethical considerations uh, taken in all experiments and observations with preschool children participants. And we need also uh, accept that some of the measures for ensuring comfort and well-being of children in the research uh, may uh, sometimes narrow or even limit uh, some types of experimental methods we would like to, to, to employ the, to study uh, the evacuation processes and dynamics of, uh, of children. And um, here I borrow a uh, nice chart by Milad uh, Hakani that demonstrates uh, different types of both experimental and field empirical methods uh, used in pedestrian crowd and evacuation dynamics research to understand evacuation behavior of people. And among all empirical methods, uh, laboratory uh, crowd experiments are usually the most popular ones. Considering preschool children, uh, such uh, experimental uh, methods entail a couple of challenges uh, that may be include, uh, for example, logistic, timeline, organization and motivation constraints, which uh, can occur and despite uh, children acquire uh, the ability to sustain attention as they grow, uh, preschool children have a still very uh, short attention spans uh, when they can concentrate on single activity and um, they can quickly lose interest and they intuitively jump to uh, other activities they are more interested in. And some scholars mention uh, time intervals around 10 or 15 minutes preschool children are able to concentrate on single activity. Uh, so uh, field and experimental methods uh, set in children's own and well-known environments uh, appear maybe more preferable, despite they include uh, other limitations for example, uh, in replicability or control over variation. And um, this will be very uh, uh, inspiring to hear uh, some uh, your uh, opinions in further discussion uh, on this topic uh, later, uh, because uh, I think uh, there are uh, quite a lot of questions um, uh, included. Uh, the last point I would like to talk about here 
uh, are some uh, specifics in variables we can be interested in uh, when we consider uh, children evacuation processes. Uh, beside conventional variables we are used to seeing in various evacuation studies, uh, they can be also um, other interesting variables related to special evacuation procedures uh, we can observe in uh, early childhood educational institutions uh, during evacuation drills, uh, mostly, and um, uh, that are related to higher level of organization and also uh, supervision uh, of uh, the moving flow. And um, for example, it's a very interesting to observe various levels of assistance required by children, uh, instruction provided by staff or living strategies when exiting classrooms or impact of uh, different positions uh, of responsible staff in groups and the strategies, how they organize uh, the children flow. And I believe they are, um, uh, more uh, very specific aspects that we can explore in this matter. Um, now I, I, I see that my time is almost over. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's not bad because uh, uh, at this place I would like to slowly finish um, uh, my presentation. And uh, 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 in the last slide, I, I prepared um, only two uh, take home messages or questions for you. Um, I would like to summer, summer up that and point out uh, that um, understanding of evacuation behaviors and dynamics of preschool children uh, is a very complex issue. And uh, what we usually do is, uh, in a very simplified way, we link uh, children's uh, evacuation behaviors, movement abilities, and patterns uh, to their age. And uh, this is related closely uh, to the first uh, of my open uh, take-home message, uh, that it's uh, what age intervals uh, can be or should be uh, considered in uh, fire safety uh, science and uh, evacuation design uh, to be uh, sufficiently detailed to cover specifics of uh, different age intervals in, uh, in, in childhood and even in the preschool uh, uh, childhood uh, period. And uh, the other question, uh, which I put here, uh, is a final point of the webinar is uh, if we can, uh, with the current level of knowledge we have uh, to, to integrate the element of preschool children um, evacuation into uh, into fire evacuation design and uh, modeling, and if there are any limitations uh, which uh, we must uh, consider. Um, so <laughs> this, uh, this uh, was uh, really the last <laughs> point uh, of my presentation. I would like to thank you very much uh, for listening, and uh, I hope uh, we can discuss together some interesting points. Uh, yes. Uh, you <laughs> yes, <laughs> would like to ask. We have already a lot of questions in the chat. And thanks, uh, first of all, for your very interesting uh, uh, presentation. I will try to cover as many questions as uh, we have, uh, uh, given the limited time. The first question is from Glenn Hamilton. Uh, and Glenn uh, is asking about uh, your knowledge, if you know of any uh, building codes in Europe or somewhere else that acknowledge uh, the specific characteristics of this occupants group. So because we, as, as we heard from you, uh, there are many specifics to take into account when designing evacuation. So are you aware of any building codes that specifically look into preschool children or, or not? Uh, 
to be honest, I don't know about uh, any international standards which uh, would uh, touch this uh, specific matter. Uh, anyway, uh, as I know, uh, in um, Czech standards, uh, we have some uh, requirements for um, the occupancies uh, where uh, children uh, usually occur as a majority. And also I know there are other uh, fire codes perspective uh, fire codes, uh, which um, sometimes demand uh, some requirements in such facilities. Uh, but uh, in general way, um, any standard uh, which would uh, include the behavioral specifics of children population, I think it's uh, currently not, uh, not available for us. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Hannah, for this uh, comment. Another question from Christina Meyer. So, uh, looking, uh, she's asking about the ratio between adults and children and how this affect uh, the outcome. So, basically, for instance, what was the ratio that you had between children and adults in your evacuation deals? And what are your comments uh, in general about uh, this ratio between how many teachers you have and, uh, and children? Mm -hmm. And it's a very good point, uh, I would say, because uh, the staff to child ratio is the key factor uh, which uh, influences um, evacuation efficiency uh, in, uh, in these uh, facilities uh, we are looking at. And um, um, Particularly uh, in the study I presented, uh, we observed different staff to child ratios uh, because the study um, involved a large variety of uh, nursery schools and subjects. So we, we had their nursery schools with only one class, one class nursery schools, but also large institutions uh, with uh, more than 10 classes. Uh, so uh, the staff to child ratio we actually observed uh, varied significantly. But uh, if I remember well, the mean value of uh, staff to child ratio we had uh, in our experimental study was about one to 10. Uh, so one adult uh, available for 10 children. And um, I must say that uh, this is also uh, a, a huge question, not only in fire safety design, but also in um, educational um, programs and uh, normal, uh, <laughs> normal situations in, uh, in nursery schools, because uh, usually there is very low uh, stuff to child ratio and it uh, can happen that uh, there is even only one uh, adult responsible adult for 20 children for example because in uh, nursery schools they are uh, quite special uh, uh, requirements and uh, uh, situations may occur that uh, teachers are changing there because maybe sometimes uh, in the morning hours, uh, there is only one uh, teacher available, for example, four hours of the day. And then uh, in the middle of the day, uh, they, they can be uh, two or three there. But again, uh, in the afternoon, there uh, uh, is also the situation that only one responsible staff uh, is here present. And uh, this is, uh, this, this is uh, quite dangerous, uh, I, I would say, because uh, 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 children uh, require uh, assistance, uh, not only physical, but also uh, verbal assistance. And they need to have a feeling of security that they uh, have to know that someone is there uh, to, be, uh, to take care uh, of them. And uh, 
higher stuff to child ratios are uh, dangerous. <laughs> uh, and we have a lot of questions and you know we're already <laughs> over time so I will just pick some <laughs> macro themes. Both Gerta Köster and Armin Seyfried they ask questions about modeling. Uh, so the main question is how would you deal with this from a computer modeling perspective? So if you will have to design a model from would you think of designing a model from scratch or can you alter existing models for adults? both for what concerns movement, but also pre-movement phase uh, when it comes to comment to, from mm -hmm. Armin. Mm -hmm. that's, also, that's also a very good point. Um, uh, I have already made some tries and uh, ideas uh, about uh, specific evacuation modelings of uh, this population. And uh, I, I, I would say that uh, uh, alternating uh, existing models is a way. Uh, I don't think there is a um, necessary need to uh, develop new models from the start, but uh, we have to uh, consider some aspects and features uh, that the model would need to appropriately simulate uh, some uh, behavioral sequences and patterns. Um, as I mentioned in the presentation, we need uh, a feature which would cover uh, different uh, grouping in, in the crowd and also uh, movement in purse, which is, uh, I, I think, uh, missing uh, in the current models. And, on the other hand, which is very important for a uh, very organized level of evacuation, uh, we observe in, in nursery schools and early, uh, early childhood institutions in general. I take two quick last comments. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. One is from Erica, ethical challenges. Uh, and I mean, do you have any specific advice about the ethics approval process? Because I mean, we you were filming children, so that's a tricky, a tricky one, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, I would say this is uh, maybe the biggest challenge uh, to consider um, all appropriate um, ethical considerations that are needed for uh, such experimental studies involving children. And maybe very short advice is uh, um, start uh, to plan and start to communicate uh, in a very early phase uh, uh, of, uh, of the research. And um, uh, communication with parents, communication with uh, the institutions, with teachers and uh, directors is, uh, uh, is essential. Yes, one last question. Uh, there, there was a comment from Rasha Judith about the availability of special code. So this is more also an interesting answer uh, for the comment that was from uh, Glenn Hamilton. But there is one last question that is about gender. How uh, have you got the chance to look into this? How gender affects speeds at different ages? Because uh, there may be different growth patterns depending on gender as well. Mm -hmm. It's also a very, very, very good point. Um, 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 actually, I, I, I didn't look uh, uh, particularly uh, on the impact of gender, uh, but um, uh, we, can, uh, we can say that uh, this is not so uh, much important in this uh, developmental stage uh, uh, of children, because there are for sure some differences in, in growth pattern. But when we look uh, at the variancy in uh, interpersonal uh, uh, developmental uh, stages and uh, the, the pace of development for various children in the same age group, then we can say that some uh, uh, differences in, in gender may be the um, minority and they don't have such huge impact, uh, I would say, on, on uh, some behavioral patterns or movement abilities. 
Thanks, Hannah. I think we are already running over time. So uh, I want to thank you again for answering the questions and to everyone that has attended. I, I'm always glad to see uh, interest on our webinar series. As, as you can see, Arthur has posted again uh, the links to our uh, to sign up to our mailing list and also to our uh, official uh, webinar uh, channel on YouTube. So I thank you one more time, uh, Hannah, for your interesting uh, contribution. And uh, I thank everyone else and stay tuned for our uh, next event. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.